Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Happy almost Thanksgiving. I want you to think about a time that you were surprised by something. Was it a gift that you had been really wanting? Was it a surprise party? Was it a special person who surprised you? We feel surprised when something we don't expect happens suddenly. Some surprises may be scary or sad, but often we think of happy surprises, like a surprise birthday party. Today, we will learn about a time Jesus' disciples were surprised. At first, they thought it was a scary surprise, but soon they realized it was the happiest surprise ever. But first, I want to teach you a new verse to the song, Jesus Loves Me. Let's sing the normal version first. I'll put the words up on the screen. Are you ready? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Okay. I'm going to put the words of the new verse on the screen and I'm going to sing it a little slower so you can sing with me. Are you ready? Jesus loves us, this we know, gave his life to tell us so. On the third day rose again, then appeared to all his friends. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Great job. Good singing. Jesus' death and resurrection showed his incredible love for us. Then Jesus appeared to his friends and disciples. Today, we're going to learn more about that. Let's watch today's video. On the first day of the week, in the evening, the disciples gathered together in a house. They locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jews. They didn't want to be killed like Jesus had been killed. But some of Jesus' disciples had reported seeing him alive. Was it true? As the disciples talked, Jesus appeared among them and said, Peace to you. The disciples were afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. It's me, Jesus said. Look at me and touch me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, but I do. Jesus showed his disciples his hands and his side. They saw his wounds. The disciples rejoiced because they were so happy to see Jesus. The disciples gave Jesus some fish to eat. Jesus talked to them and explained the Bible to them. The Bible is about me, Jesus said. He helped them understand how the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms told about him. Then Jesus told the disciples that they had a job to do. Jesus had died and was raised from the dead so that people could be forgiven for their sins. The disciples needed to tell other people to repent from their sins and be forgiven. Jesus said, God sent me to earth, and in the same way, I am sending you. One of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus visited him. He did not believe that Jesus was alive. Thomas said, I want to see and touch the holes in his hands and his side, or I will never believe. A week later, Thomas was with the disciples when Jesus appeared again. Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Reach out and touch my side. Don't be an unbeliever, believe. Thomas did believe. My Lord and my God, he said. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who believe in me without seeing me are blessed. For 40 days, Jesus presented himself to more than 500 people and proved that he is alive. 
Jesus is still alive today. We have not seen Jesus, but if we believe in him, we will be blessed. He sends out believers to tell others about him and gives us power through the Holy Spirit. Have you ever heard news that was so good you didn't believe it at first? That's probably how some of Jesus' disciples felt. They may have remembered that Jesus said he, he would die and rise again, but coming back from the dead is easier said than done. Jesus proved he is alive by appearing to the disciples, and he didn't just show up either. He spoke to them, allowed them to feel the marks that the nails left, and ate with them. Thomas, who wasn't with the others at the time, did not believe. Thomas even said that he would never believe unless he saw and felt Jesus for himself. It was foolish of Thomas to refuse to believe, but in many ways, we are similar. We may say we believe the truth of Jesus, but often the way we live or the sinful choices we make show that we actually don't fully believe Jesus. Full belief in Jesus means that we worship him as king of our lives. We lovingly obey him and tell others about him. When we choose sin, it suggests that somewhere in our hearts, we think that our ways are better than God's ways. Thankfully, Jesus has already defeated sin and death. Even when we doubt, we can ask God to give us more faith to help us believe. For 40 days, Jesus presented himself to more than 500 people and proved that he is alive. And Jesus is still alive today. We've not seen Jesus, but if we believe in him, we will be blessed. He sends out believers to tell others about him and gives us power through the Holy Spirit. Now, let's watch Pastor Brian answer some questions from kids. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Skylar from Marion, Indiana asks, Sometimes I doubt God is real. Is that wrong? What should I do? Skylar, that is completely understandable. Uh, I think all of us have times where we, we question things about our faith and, and some are, are big ideas like God's existence at all. Some are, are a little bit smaller things. But that is one thing that we all share in common, that faith at times is difficult. I've been there. I, I know as a father of three kids who are, are really learning about who God is and, and learning about the gospel, we have conversations in our home quite a bit about this. And so it's common, and here's the thing, it's okay. Um, God understands that we have questions. He understands that there are times we're gonna doubt, and he is so kind, he's so loving and gracious to come and meet us where we are and take us where we need to be, deeper, stronger faith. And so it's okay. And here's the thing, doubting is normal. What you're not doing is rejecting. Those are two different things. Questioning, wanting to know God better, being confused about who he is and what he's done, that's normal. It's so different from rejecting God and saying, no, I know you're not real, or I reject who you are, I reject what you've done. And that's not what you're doing. So find comfort in that. You're not a bad Christian because you have questions. God invites us to bring questions to him. That's what we love about God, that he is not threatened by our questions. Uh, he is He's not unnerved by our questions and our doubts. He is gracious to meet us where we are, again, and take us where we need to be. So here's a question for you to think about. What do you think is the difference between doubt and disbelief? What do you think is the difference between doubt and disbelief? I've had times in my life where I've had doubts. I've doubted that God could really love me, and I've doubted that God could really forgive me. I've even had a few moments where I wondered if God was real. For me, the difference between doubts and disbelief is time. I have doubts sometimes, but they don't last a long time. Disbelief, to me, is more of a decision to no longer believe, and it's much longer lasting. Do you sometimes struggle with doubts or disbelief? Did you know that you can talk to God about those? It's okay, you can pray about it and talk to him. He's big enough to handle your doubts. All right, now let's watch a video about missions.
learning about a people group in East Asia. Missionaries have different ways to reach different people, but the message is the same. Jesus died and rose again. Jesus proved his he is alive. We should pray for these missionaries serving in East Asia as well as other dangerous places. Okay, now let's look up our key passage again. It comes from John eleven twenty five. Get your Bibles. Okay, we start in our table of contents, and John is in the New Testament, and it is the fourth book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And for me, it says it's on page 886. So I'm going to use my bookmark. To, whoa, I lost it. To flip over to John. There it is. See John, and now we need the chapter number. And that's the big numbers. Can you see the one right up there in that corner? We need the big number 11. So there it is for me. There's our big number 11. And I need verse 25, which is up over here. There it is, my verse number 25. And it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Okay. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins and rose again to prove that his sacrifice defeated sin and death. We have hope for a future spent with God in his perfect kingdom because of Jesus. Our physical bodies will die, but those who have faith in Jesus will gain new bodies that will never die. Believers will reign with Jesus forever in God's kingdom. Okay, now would you like join me in prayer? God, thank you that Jesus is alive. Thank you that we can be sure that we have eternal life through your son. Give us wisdom and courage to obey you and live for your glory. Amen. All right, I will see you next week. Bye.